I always find myself looking for new ways to decide what I'm going to read, and this year especially I found it quite difficult to decide what I'm actually going to pick up, because I have all of those books behind me there that I have not read, and um, just picking what I want to read at a certain point isn't working anymore. So in comes this really crusty old pot. I remember when we bought this, and uh, in the following years, when I was younger, I covered it in pretty much every sticker under the sun. Anyway, so for the next week or however long, I'm going to be picking prompts out of this little jar, and they're going to decide what I'm going to read. I don't know how many books we're going to read in this video, it depends on how fast I can get through them, but I think we should just see what I'm going to read. Okay, so, our first prompt. Let me, let me, uh, move the camera down so you can see what is actually going on inside this pot. Lovely. I'm just gonna mix around, I think. I'm really trying to build up the suspense here. I don't even know what to do. This one. Let's put, let's put this down. Five star predictions. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, should we should we consult the list? Alright, let's look at my list, shall we? I own like a curse, but that is for another video. Um I have got Owlish. So it is between Dig, which I kind of don't want to disturb, the book of the most precious substance, and Owlish. How are we going to decide this? The whole point of this video was to make things easier. And <laughs> look what's happened! I really thought this would be it. I really, I really thought, wow, wow was I wrong. This is one of my biggest screw-ups in a long time when it comes to books that I thought I would like. I'm giving this one star. What was this? Like seriously, what was this? Who was this book for? Because it's meant to be YA. The themes are really adult. Um, the language used, very adult. And I'm not saying that YA books can't have mature themes because The Spirit Bears Its Teeth did that, but it still felt like a book for teenagers. This is this is a book for adults, but it's, it's YA because they're like 16 or something. I'm not necessarily saying I have a problem with that, although I'm sure all the implications are that I do have a problem with that. I just think that there's no real direction in this book. And this is coming from someone who really loves weird books like Bunny. I was expecting Bunny levels of weirdness from this, given how people talked about this book. It was really not that weird. Sure, yeah, the stylistic choices were weird. The chapter titles were weird and felt very AI generated. But the actual plot, first of all, it didn't have any. The actual plot was not weird at all. It was just you were following these characters going about their lives. None of them were interesting. None of them were distinct. It was very much a clap if you care kind of situation and no one was clapping. Sometimes I read books that I'm not too keen on that I can understand why other people like. Why do people like this? Like truly, why do people like this? It was supposed to give me Bunny, but it did not give me Bunny. It gave me some other book I did not like. The worst part is there were a couple of flickers throughout it where I saw the book that it could be. A.S. King throws this at you and then she's just like, never mind, I'm gonna be this boring book and um, scam me out of a couple of days of my life when I could have read something else. I kind of understand what she was trying to do with this, like what she was trying to critique and everything with like right supremacy and racism being passed down the generations, like I, I get what she was trying to do. I get it. But do I think she did it well? Do I think she did it in an interesting way? Absolutely blinking no. I can't believe how wrong I am. This is, this is actually quite embarrassing how wrong I am I've been with this book. This is, this is the prize exhibit of me not knowing my reading taste. Because what was this book? What was this book? I don't understand. I don't understand why people like this. And it's got like a really high, it's got like a 4.16 average rating on Goodreads. How? How? If you like this book, can you explain why you liked it? I'm done. It has been a couple of days and I have a cold now, which is just brilliant. We're back to this lovely old thing, and uh, today we're gonna hope that I don't get screwed over by one of past me's previous decisions. So let's give this thing a shuffle. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look like straight into your soul for a second. <laughs> 
scavenger hunt picks my next read? I'm ill, what are you trying to do to me? I suppose we'll have to get up a load of prompts and I'll have to find a book. Okay, I have a list of prompts up and something's going to happen. Grab your favourite book, go to the acknowledgements and the first name you see, find a book by an author with the same name. I'm going to pick my recent favourite book rather than my all-time favourite book because I don't even believe I have one. Beverly. Do I have a book by a Beverly? Amanda. Narrowly Weir and Alice Richardson. I must have a book by an Alice. Alice Osman. That took me far too long. Uh, what's the next one? Pick something on that cover and find another book with the thing in the title. Um, let's just pick... There are... There's a person? There's a... There's a girl? Do I have a book with girl in the title? Oh wait, hang on. Where is it? Girls of Paper and Fire. Go to page 50, line 5. Pick a word from that line and find a title with that word. Okay, line 5. We've got Born, She Muses, It's Something I've Heard Before, Many People. Since I've is a contraction for I have. Hmm. <laughs> what, what am I meant to do with this? Find a five star read with the same colours on the cover. It's just it's just a lot of blue. Do I have a five star? Radio silence. Radio silence! Find a book with the same number of pages. You've got to be kidding me. Uh, 403. Is that an awkward number of pages? It feels awkward. No, 381. 367. 386. 407. 407? Am I allowed that? Does it have to be exact? Or do I get a tiny bit of leeway? Can I please have a tiny bit of leeway? Lessons in chemistry, perhaps? I think that one's got probably around the right length of... Ooh, ooh, ooh. 401, including about the author and acknowledgements. I'm, I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. Flip open to any page. The first name you see, find a book by an author who, who shares that name. Sloan Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Are there any famous authors called Elizabeth? It feels like something that I should own, but I don't think I do. Elizabeth Acevedo. Find another title with the same number of letters. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For the poet X. Lakewood. That has lake, wood. Find a book with a similar cover. Is that going to happen? Do I have a book with a, with a cover like this? These are kind of the same atmosphere. They're sort of like a obscured face. I think this is probably as close as we're gonna get, honestly. Flip to a random page, point at a word, and find that word in a book title on your TBR shelf. I'm gonna pick that one. Endured. <laughs> Youth. Do I have youth? I kind of feel like I don't. Now I'm thinking that I want to reread this book. Okay. Her name is. Is. I must have something with is in the title, surely. Is is just like a very basic word. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to is, by the way, for calling you basic. But let's let's turn you round. Maybe we'll put you here. Push you back like that. Yeah. Is ah. None of this is true by Lisa Jewell. In this book, we are following two women. One of them is called Alex, the other one is called Josie, and they meet on both of their birthdays and they discovered that they were born pretty much at the same time, at the same hospital, in the same place, etc, etc, at the same year, all of that stuff. But their lives are, are very, very different. And Josie goes home that night and discovers that Alex has a fairly well-known podcast. And they meet a few days later and Josie says to Alex, hey, I've got a proposition for you. Why don't you interview me for your podcast? Because she, Alex, interviews a lot of like, um, women that have rebuilt their lives, that are like, strong business women, like that's that sort of thing. Whereas Josie is the complete opposite of that. But as we get further and further into Josie's story, we start to realise that maybe what she's saying isn't the truth. Hello, I read basically nothing yesterday. It's now 
something like 2 a.m. on April Fool's Day. Honestly, the biggest April Fool's prank is the fact that I'm ill and I'm literally going to Edinburgh on the second. So that's that's just like this is a curse at this point. I was just reading none of this is true. I'm on like page 10 or something, so I don't have anything to report. And I just had to put the book down because I, my brain was getting so foggy that I just, I couldn't, I could not read. I can't even describe it. It just felt like my brain was about to erupt with um, volcanic ash. Hi, am I losing my grip on reality? Of course I am, I'm ill. <laughs> this book is quite interesting. I have many theories about what could be going on and I don't know if I'll be happy if my theories are right. Oh, is my hearing going as well? Is my ear getting all blocked up? This is a situation. Hello. I don't have the book to hold up because I'm currently away, as I have mentioned, but I have finished it. I listened to the audiobook on like the four, five hour train ride yesterday. Anyway, I found it gripping. This book had me cranking up the speed because I wanted to find out what was going on and when the audiobook stopped playing for a second like I was getting quite angry actually because I just wanted to know what was gonna, gonna happen. I don't think it's the best book that I've ever read so it's gonna get a four from me. I thought it was really good. I really liked it. I think the ending was a choice and I don't think everyone's going to like it because it doesn't answer quite a lot of questions and it doesn't give that neat resolution that most thriller books do but I would actually give props to Lisa Jewell for that because it made it feel really realistic. It did feel like a true crime podcast because her life kind of becomes like that. I think the way that it was all wrapped up made it feel like a complete story that could happen in real life. It didn't actually go down the avenue that I was expecting with them being birthday twins. I don't know if you can sense what I thought was going to happen, but I wouldn't say it was necessarily really surprising, but it was extremely, extremely entertaining. I didn't get every sort of reveal and I still don't know what really happened because a lot of things aren't confirmed, but I think that Lisa Jewell did well. Four stars, I would recommend it. I think the audiobook's great, even as someone who struggles with audiobooks. Listening to that on the train, the whole time I was just like, anyway, I'm currently in Edinburgh. I'm not here for very long, which is irritating because the city feels like a novel should be set here with all of the like winding streets and cobbles and things. We are leaving Edinburgh today and going somewhere else. But yeah, I will try and film as much as I can because I will be going to some book shops. I'm just going to quickly pick a prompt before I leave. So let's just give them all a start. I'm hoping I get something that's just on my phone so I don't have to lug a load of books up with me. Newest book on my to read shelf. Well, that is Compound Fracture by Andrew Joseph White. I don't own it because it's not out yet, but I have an advanced reader copy on my phone. So that's that's good news for me. It's thing on. All right, one, two, one, two. Let's keep it rolling. Yeah. Hey, she just got out of a relationship. I got out of one myself just now. Mm. And we're both feeling lost and alone, but ain't nobody asking for help. Not now. Mm. Cause it's healing to do, but it's getting pretty boring And I'd rather distract my broken heart with you Remember she just got out of a relationship, I got out of one myself Keep that in mind, yeah So now it's free flow, dialogue mixed with the weed smoke Might as well dive in your deep soul, there ain't no self-control Your body language speaks so sophisticated We know where this is about to go How do I even put this? I just feel like I should not have read this book because I remember looking at the synopsis when it was first released and thinking, eh, I don't know. The only reason I read it was because it was on NetGalley and like the publisher just let me read it. So that's, that's very nice of them. I don't even want to read this book because I just truly do not think this was for me. I struggle, and I've, I've noticed this, and it, and it doesn't make any sense. I often struggle with politics in books, like not in political fantasies, but in real world scenarios. Quite often I don't like 
books about protesting and things like that. And it doesn't really make any sense because in real life, I find politics interesting. I think maybe it's more prevalent in a young adult book because they're quite often just like introductions to politics. Whereas I kind of already know what, what, what's going on. I don't want to bash this book, I really don't. But I also want to be honest equally. <sighs> How can this man write The Spirit Bears Its Teeth and then equally write this book? How? I think thematically it's a very important book. It just felt like Andrew Joseph White had some themes, had some commentary, and then just didn't know what to do with the plot. Because I believe that is probably the bit that I'm finding the most issue with, because it's about this kid and he lives in this town and the sheriff in this small town in, I think it's West Virginia. He's a kind of evil man and they want to overthrow him. And then like main character guy gets beaten up and it's, it's kind of a revenge story. Often those are quite hit or miss. This very much fell into the sort of basic revenge story and sure there were some shocking moments, there were some moments where I wanted to read to find out what was going to happen next but I really just should have given up on this book and it makes me sad to say that but at the same time I shouldn't have read it. I don't want to rate it because of that although actually at some point I'm going to have to write a review of this and I'm going to have to rate it something so for me oh, it's probably like a 2 point. It's a 2.5. I don't even know what to do with my life now. I should have been proved wrong. Why was I not proved wrong? Well, anyway, I do believe that is the end of this video. We had a very mixed bag of results. We had a one star, a four star, and now like a two slash two and a half. Um, wow. I would, however, like to do this video again because I think picking prompts out this jar was fun. I did enjoy that aspect, even if two out of the three books weren't great. And I also had a cold in between that. Brilliant. Anyway, I'd like to say a big thank you for watching this video. If you got to the end, what should I make you comment? Is there a castle emoji for Edinburgh Castle? If you get to the end, comment a castle, if such emoji exists. I'm sure it does. But otherwise, I hope you're having a great day, and I will see you in my next video, probably. I still have no idea what it's going to be. <laughs> Goodbye.